Get full access to over 10,000 episodes with your paid subscription. My Outdoor TV. Start your free trial today. I'm Mike Robinson. I'm a restaurateur and a chef. I'm also a hunter. I've got a pub with a Michelin star that I believe serves some of the best wild food in Britain. And to me, sustainability is everything, which is why I only harvest what the countryside can provide. I manage the natural environment so that it will produce the finest ingredients for my kitchen for decades to come. Never taking too much, keeping the land in balance. I call this farming the wild. This time, I'm in the marshes of Norfolk, England, to hunt a Chinese water deer in this ancient landscape so that I can cook up a couple of French classics Look at that now. Look. for my fellow hunters, Mark and Paul. I'll stay clear of these fangs. It's 6 a.m., dead still and freezing cold. We've come to the far east of England to hunt in the marshes of East Anglia. I'm here to hunt Chinese water deer. This is a landscape of boggy flat salt marshes reclaimed from the North Sea, which is only a few miles to our east. The sea was forced back using a clever combination of high coastal defences and pumps driven by windmills, all put in place back in the 1800s. And although the system's been modernised over centuries, the land still seems to want to return to its watery wild state. Nowadays, this reclaimed pasture land isn't good for anything except cattle grazing, but Chinese water deer thrive here. The trick with this is you get focused on one and then you tend to lose, you get the tunnel vision and you lose then what's around you. Sometimes you can be fooled by going for that very one and then one pops up. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Not much better alongside. So. I'm here to cull some Chinese water deer bucks for my restaurant, guided by the landowner Mark and his mate Paul. Mark has to cull 15 deer a year to prevent damage to this fragile ecosystem. He clocked us, didn't he? Absolutely. It's a natural habitat for Chinese water deer. We've got rons either side, so plenty of reeds, plenty of habitat. And I mean, they're not big animals, are they? No, I mean, they're only sort of Labrador size. You'll probably get one anything between 10 and 16 kilos, although the ones we have here are some of the biggest in the country. Are they? Very much so. The unique thing about a Chinese water deer is I can cook a rack of Chinese water deer like you cook a rack of lamb with fat on the back, yeah. immaculately crisscrossed. I mean, it makes my mouth water thinking about it. Back in my restaurant, we serve a French trimmed rack of Chinese water deer in the same way that we serve a rack of Munjak. It's flashed in a hot pan to form a good crust. It's rested, and then we carve it and serve it with springtime pea puree and morel mushroom. It's a real signature dish. But you know what I love about hunting for food? Go on. What really does it for me is that we can't eat unless we succeed. That's true. <laughs> oh, this is the most awesome morning. Two two fifty. Two fifty. Yeah. We're gonna go out through that gate, up and come in on. Mark's family have owned the marsh here near Beckles for generations. He knows the terrain here like the back of his hand. So hopefully we're not gonna get our feet wet. That's it. Right, what we'll do then. I mean, there could be any number between us and there. Yeah, I'm sure there are too. Um, we'll get through this gate and we'll slowly make our way up. From clump to clump? Yeah. And we'll see, I think that's one to the left of that gate as well. Two there, perhaps. The plan is to use the cover of Dawn's early light to get out into the marsh without disturbing the ground. 
Hopefully we'll stalk into any deer we spot using dead ground to our advantage, which turns out to be the many drainage ditches that weave through this marsh. It's an amazing landscape. Mm. It's totally different. Well, th this has been as it is for, well, thousands of years, and it's been grazed uh, for livestock for, well, as long as man has had animals, pretty much. Jerry, come up behind me on the bank. 60 yards. Are you ready? Because this is going to happen quickly. You're literally going to have enough time for us to stop. You go up on the bank, get in position, and shoot. Oh, shoot one, okay. If you can take both, take both. Okay. Bigger ones, mate. Once I've crawled into position, I find the rising ground has defeated me. My bipod is not tall enough. And I should have brought my shooting sticks. It's a lesson learned. Listen to your instincts. Farming the Wild is brought to you by Hornady. Accurate, deadly, dependable. Sauer. German precision since 1751. I'm Mike Robinson, hunter and chef. I'm taking part in a management cull of Chinese water deer in the marshes of East Anglia. And I'm going to cook up a restaurant-worthy feast for my fellow hunters with the results. Look at that. A bush. <laughs> There's Chinese water deer all around us, but they're incredibly alert. And it's very flat, so getting a, a prone position's hard. We uh, have two Chinese water deer running straight across from the further river wall. That's it. Uh, they're chasing each other, which is an indication it's the start of their rut. The frost we've had this morning, which is the first good frost we've had of the year, has started to kick off the hormones. And the rule of thumb is when you sit down for your Christmas dinner, that will be when the uh, female water deer will start to actually implant their, uh, their fertilised egg and it will start to, uh, to develop into the young uh, water deer for the next spring. Try and get on that little, on that little rise in front, that'll be perfect. So the problem you've got here is that the uh, water deer will maximise any undulation in the ground, whether it be a, a, an 18 foot dike, whether it just be a little scrape, and the thistles that are on here, the cattle obviously graze during the year, but they don't graze the thistles. And it gives them just that little bit of an edge over us. I've crawled onto a rise to get some elevation, but there's just not enough height to get a bead over the thistles. When you stood up, you came out of cover. The rising ground has frustrated me yet again. This is one of the little um, safe havens for them. Yeah. The habitat, if you think, they come from Asia originally, introduced in, what, the mid-1800s to Woden. Yes. Um, then set free because obviously the law changed, you couldn't have private collections or ornamentals anymore. So they've set up camp here um, through private collection, which has basically done exactly the same as Woden. Well, just throw ours out. But this is perfect. <sighs> Habitat from the point of view of in Asia, they would have reed beds, paddy fields, that sort of yes. thing. Yes. Here, the thistles and the reed beds, they're just, it's just perfect for them.
This is the wildest Chinese water deer stalking I can ever Absolutely. imagine. Yep. And, and it's an amazing terrain. You've got cattle mooing over there. Water deer, we just watched one run in the distance there. And even mushrooms that grow perfectly and then freeze it's solid. solid. <laughs> it's amazing. Should we take that home for breakfast? Yeah, that's true wilderness. That <laughs> Proper, is. that is. And, um, you know, the reputation of Chinese water deer in this country is sometimes that they're not very hard to shoot. This is a different world, isn't it? This is them at their best. This is the Chinese water deer in their natural habitat, in the wild, and they are alert to everything. Well, they beat us this morning. They did. <laughs> but we shall return. I mean, man, I ch we chased at least seven different water deer. Yeah. And, uh... Yeah, so we'll we'll get a bit more equipment tomorrow morning, get some sticks so we can get higher off the ground. Yeah, it's getting off the ground and getting over those thistles and the vegetation. That's fantastic. And because you've got the undulation in this land, it looks flat. And it's not. But once you actually start getting prone and trying to take a shot, you've just got so many different tuffs and barriers in the way. So, yeah, proper kit. Back we come tomorrow and have another go. Splendid breakfast. Yes. I'm Mike Robinson, hunter and chef. I'm stalking Chinese water deer in the marshes of eastern England so that I can cook up a restaurant-worthy feast for my fellow hunters. I steer clear of these fangs. After yesterday's severe frost, a cold north wind gusting up to 30 miles an hour will buffet the coastal areas of the region. Day two, and it's still freezing, but guess what? The wind has picked up. This time, we're here even earlier. It's pitch black, so my cameraman, Joe, has switched to night vision mode. And although it's bitterly cold, at least the wind's in our faces as we head out into the marsh. The plan is to get into the heart of the Chinese water deer territory and hopefully spot one within shootable distance as the light increases. So this morning is slightly different to yesterday where we had the frost and you know this morning is a big wind chill factor a lot more perceivable wind so we've come in along the soil bank uh, against one of the dikes in order to actually flank these uh, these water deer and hopefully what we'll do now is we'll have an opportunity to actually get into two or three of them uh, using the wind to obviously our advantage we've got the rising sun behind us yep. it makes it harder for them to see us i mean i can see now i can see one straight out in front with the naked eye yep. I mean, they're amazing little critters because you just see that pale flash of fur yep. just above the grass, and then you can just see them dotted around. Yeah. But I guess here, if we can get back to a fence post with the sticks, yeah. we should be all right, although it is pretty windy. Yeah, it is a bit windy, but I think hopefully we should be fine. Yeah, be fine. I can see him there. Look, there he is. Yeah, straight out front. I certainly have some front left, another one behind him. How far are Probably a good 300. And in fact, he's still there. Can you see him? Yeah, he's got his back to us Where now. Is he? If you go to the church, I think it might be another one. Hang on a no, straight ahead. Straight ahead there, drop. Shoot it. I can see it, Joe. It's okay. Can no, he's moving again. But I just want to make sure it's the same deer. That's... I got I see him. Okay. See him? I see him. down feeding, moving to the right. He stopped. Yeah, they, I've got two in the frame now. Which one? Okay, front left, front left. Front left, Joe. Yeah, I'm on him, shoot him. I think it might be another one. No, straight ahead. Straight ahead there, drop him as well. Straight ahead where you shot the other one. Good. Thank you, my friend. Well, I mean, a left and a right of Chinese water there. What an amazing experience. They didn't even look up. No, didn't, didn't fuss at all. They're, they're so calm here from the point of view of they don't get harassed. If we come out, we come out, we do the job, we go away, leave really? them. Well, that, can I say that was great stalking, you know your marsh. 
but you knew exactly how to get round the wind on it because the wind's enough. I had a lovely safe shot with a big bank behind it. Mm. Oh, you perfect know, backstop. It was here. just amazing. Goodness gracious me, that is the biggest one I've ever seen. It's a buck. Thank you, mate. It's, it's amazing. Thank you. Congratulations. What a beautiful animal. I feel really privileged. I really, really do. And the second buck, well, he turns out to be on the other side of a 10 foot wide dike. Just goes to show how deceptive this ground is. <laughs> right, now what do we do? Oh, there it is, the gate over there. I'm a little annoyed with myself with this deer because I've. I've shot it well on one side, but it must have been a little more quartered than I thought because the bullet's an inch or so further forward on the other and I've damaged his shoulder. And I hate damaging meat, but I mean, I, I'm blown away by them. And, and they're little furry vampire teddy bears. I mean, they're, they're just the craziest little animals I've ever seen in my life. To think that these are running wild on British soil. Now it's up to me to create a delicious meal that will truly do justice to this amazing creature. Farming the Wild is brought to you by Hornady. Accurate, deadly, dependable. I'm Mike Robinson, chef and hunter. I'm farming the wild to provide the best ingredients for my restaurants. I've hunted Chinese water deer in the marshes of Norfolk with my guide Mark and hunting buddy Paul. Look at that. I mean, come on. There's another inch of that up in his neck. Now it's time to feed them with a restaurant-inspired dish cooked over my campfire. Grilled leeks, dauphinoise potatoes and Chinese water deer racks. Yummy. It's a restaurant in the woods, mate. Indeed. <laughs> That's what it's all about. So much fun. So what I'm going to do is, is do a few bulbs of garlic because dauphinoise potatoes or potato gratin, whatever you want to call it, basically potatoes cream, garlic and salt and then heat and it turns into something amazing. It's creamy and unctuous and delicious. I want this to be a really grown up delicious dish. Just because we're in the woods doesn't mean we, we have to cook crudely so we're going to do really beautiful food. Right, bud, so here's the spuds, and they've all been sliced. The French would call this gratin dauphinois. Nestle this in without too much ash going in. <laughs> Look at the fat! It's unbelievable. Is... I don't think anyone watching will believe that's a deer, you know? This is a bit restauranty, but it's really good. Mark, could you hold both sides there? Okay. Pull them apart slightly. I'm going to go in right at the junction there. You instantly feel them start to break. Push down hard as I do it. Cut down here. Like that. And then go down the bones. So, we're going to French trim them. One of my favourite things in the world is a rack of Chinese water deer. It's, it's such a delicate piece of meat to cook. And what we're doing now is we're just really getting in here. We're French trimming. Or as our cousins across the pond would say, we're Frenching. And then if you deeply score the fat like that, as it roasts, that will dribble into the meat. So there we have it, a pair of racks. You know, I'd be fired from a posh restaurant for that job, but I want to eat. <laughs> and it's going to be stunning. Get a good dunk. Like that, look. Yeah. Lovely, look at that. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> Right. What has an effect on the juiciness of the meat is how you cook it, how you allow the muscle to relax after it's cooked, yeah. how much moisture you can capture. What that butter will do is give a great flavour and help to give us a nice bark on the outside, a real seal. So you're a fan of, of, uh, of letting meat rest then uh, I, and as I'm long not, as possible? I'm not a fan of it, it's essential. What matters when you're cooking like this is, is heat control. So I'm trying to cook these really gently. So what I, where I cook in a kitchen, is I'll get the meat really brown on a charcoal grill and then I'll finish it in a really low oven so that the temperature comes up very, very slowly. And meat, like venison, changes from raw to cooked. The proteins change from raw to cooked at about 60 to 65 degrees. I want it pink 
all the way through, but cooked all the way uh, through. Yeah. I'm going to turn these over, sorry, just to give them a little, and let that heat come up through the fat. Most venison, like if you're cooking a loin steak or a backstrap or a piece of haunch, what we call a parve, you've got no fat covering, no protection, so you're just constantly moving the meat till you get that lovely even brown colour and then you take it away from the heat and let it cook really gently. And once you're happy it's cooked, rest it. Okay, Joe, are you ready? Yep. Serious. Look at those. Now, a little chef's technique that we use all the time in restaurants to really boost the flavour of the dish is the deglaze. My plancha is coated with taste. The little sticky bits are packed full of flavour. And to turn that into a sauce, I need the acid from the wine, which will deglaze that pan. There we have grilled leeks, dauphinoise potatoes, Chinese water deer rack and T-bone. That has to be the best water deer I've ever had. Put it up. Excellent. Mm. Oh, yeah. Have a look this at that chop. Now that red wine has deglazed all the meat juices to a point where it's sticky. When I wipe my chop in it, it just glazes. I'm going to chew that right now. Oh, just super. I'm real. I've never ever done dopamine more potatoes in the woods. How are they? Oh my goodness. So the potatoes just reeking of garlic, slippery with double cream. We're in the middle of the woods and we're being served restaurant grade Chinese water here. It doesn't get any better than that. It's Absolutely just not. astounding, absolutely astounding. Fantastic experience.